So this guy is telling me, I mean, uh, I'm sitting in Oman, Oman, and I'm um, not even in the, I'm not even Muscat, I'm in Salala, and I'm uh, sitting in an open cafeteria, which kind of looks like the Roman or Greek ruins, you know, with those pillars and what have you. And I have all these people who have guns and knives. Uh, they are the hill people, they are the camel tribe, and they don't seem to be having any laws that govern them. And then there is this guy who suddenly starts talking to me. And uh, I'm not perturbed by that. I think that, uh, you know, people are friendly to travelers. And I somehow have managed to stay safe, partly because my mother, uh, you know, protects me even after her death. And partly because I can maybe have some sort of weird charm which puts people at ease or maybe because I don't get scared so easily and then people feel that there is no need to joke around with this guy so he just started talking to me and the knife that he had was a very curved knife the kind of knives that you saw in Tintin books that the Amirs had you know which is Amir in uh, Amir in uh, in Arabic, I'm sure. So this guy says, so where are you coming from? And I said, I was born in a city called Bombay, in a country called India, and I'm a New Zealand citizen who lives in Australia, and I'm just traveling the world. And he says, what do you think of Oman? I said, "It's Oman people are very nice, and that's a fact. The locals respect Indians because they know the kind of work the Indians do. And that is kind of catching up, but it started in Oman. Then it caught up in Dubai, didn't catch up in Sarja for a long time because uh, Sarja was more affiliated to the Saudi lifestyle. But Abu Dhabi was decent. And now there is there is an awareness of what, what an Indian migrant will do as opposed to say what a Filipino would do, as opposed to say uh, what a Nepali or a Pakistani would do. So there are all the stereotypes. So he was telling me, what do you do? So I have a standard reply for Arabic countries that I'm a teacher. But if I'm caught in a Western country, for example, when I was caught taking pictures in Cairo, sorry, in New, Zealand, New York, I told them I was a reporter who was writing about a story about how the world has changed since 911. But when I was caught in Cairo and the army caught me in both the cases, um, I told them I was a teacher because if you tell, and uh, yeah, if you tell somebody in an Islamic world that you are a reporter, they might not really like it. If you say that in some countries, they might even slice your head, and uh, that's a rude stereotype. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So this guy was nice to me. He says, "What do you do?" I said, "I'm a teacher." He says, "What do you think of Oman?" I said, Oman is nice. He said, no, there's a problem with third world countries. And he started discussing And I said, I never thought of Oman as third world country. And he says, no, the thing is, <clears throat> Oman is a rich country, but it's still a third world country. Because uh, the, you know, the way people think, the attitude that people have is more connected to not just the lifestyle, but their their attitude, their attitude, their perception, their their code of ethics, their sense of uh, public behavior or uh, public uh, knowledge, or you know, caring for the people. You know, I was visiting my friend Arun, and Arun has been in Muscat forever, and I knew him in school days. And Arun in school days was tall, dark, and handsome, and then he had this life-threatening accident and somehow he managed to save himself but Arun meeting Arun was always uh, I mean I knew him in school days so I have not seen this guy for over 20 years really and it was amazing maybe 30 years and I was in Muscat and I was about to take the early morning bus to Salala so I slept in the grass outside uh, the mosque there and because I had eaten in a Pakistani restaurant and reached at three in the morning. And all the hotels were closed. I mean, for some reason, when it's a public holiday, a lot of 
Dubai people come to uh, Oman. So there was a big, there was a huge uh, shortage. And also there were these open ground stadiums where, you know, you had all these Balochistan people coming and talking to you. And people warned me that to be careful because they are, uh, they are Oman uh, citizens, but uh, they can be tricky. And that was not... Uh, that was not uh, in respect to all the Balochis everywhere, but they just said that. And then I ate in a Pakistani restaurant for around seven, seven dirhams maybe, or 7,000. I mean, they have their own. So in Oman, you have one Omani dinar or rial is equal to 1,000 pesos. That's just the way it is. So then I caught the bus and I reached... Arun in seven in the evening and he was very nice he was I was amazed to see him and he said you you look exactly the same and I thought it was one big compliment because Arun is not the kind of guy who just gives you random compliments because he wants to be nice to you I mean I don't like random compliments which I just said for nothing like oh you look great nice I mean I can sense that So I thought that was great. And then we went into the hills where all the camel people live. And we even went up to a dargah, which is a mausoleum or a tomb. We even went to the border of Yemen. And uh, I knew I was talking to somebody in a shop, in a maybe a barber shop actually. And they told me that the Balochis helped with the Salala was originally a part of Yemen and that, thus it looks very different from Oman. It's very green and it has waterfalls and it's, it's, it's uh, green and uh, beautiful. But then it seems a king's mother married uh, uh, the Oman person and he got that Salala as a gift or a dowry or what have you. And then the Yemen attacked uh, Salala because they wanted it back and then the Baloches help fight the Yemenis. And thus there were a lot of Balochis who became Omani citizens. And the guy with the gun and the knife and all, and he couldn't really intimate, intimidate me, but I, I'm not sure if that was his intention. But we had a great conversation and I had some cha and some uh, toast omelet sandwich and he paid for it. And he says, this was very nice talking to you. It's always nice talking to educated people from around the world. And I wouldn't say that I, I would fit that description aptly, but I think I, I have picked up my bits and pieces of information and knowledge from the world uh, as, you, as you do, you know. And thus here we are. Thank you for listening.